saw firsthand evidence that the beast is back on the warpath. I know you're after that international championship belt. You've been tagging with Brother Leo now, looking for that tag team championship. But from the action that we saw in the ring, the way you rescued uh, Stephen Pettipon, Leo, uh, I know that the fans in the Maritimes are comforted by the fact that you're out and you're hungry. You know, there's one thing that I always wanted, and I've had it before a lot of times. It's that international belt, that belt that I want. And I want the tag team belt. And you know that I'm still capable of wearing the belt around my belly. And Rod Starr, you think you're tough? You've been hiding from me? You're always talking about everybody else, but I don't hear you mention my name. But you know, Rod Starr, I never went to school too long, but I can still write my name, you know. And the contract is going to be out, and my name will be on it. And I guarantee that you have to put up with me before too long and the tag team belt Leo and I will wear and we'll wear I will wear the international belt I will be the champion very very shortly lost art of the wrestling promo with one of the best of all time the legendary Leo Burke heartthrob of the Maritimes who <laughs> wrestled all over the world so many countries so many championship matches and uh, so many memories, uh, too many to share on this particular segment, but uh, ran into Leo here in Calgary and thought we just had to talk. We got chatting about who were the best all time at cutting the wrestling promo. So back in the old days of television, they used to go on after the matches and then cut what was called the promo. So Leo, how important, let's start with that before we get into who was the best, how important was a good promo to driving the wrestling business? Oh, very important actually. Like, uh, <clears throat> not only you let people know what's happening, but when or why, or if you're frustrated, you show your frustration and they take it from there. Like, uh, and it was essential to build, the, you called them the feud. You needed a good feud to put people in the building in the, in the different towns. Yes, I'd say so. Like, I remember when I was a kid, if I remember Wild Bull Curry, okay, and I just seen him on TV like, doing an interview about who he was going to wrestle and what he was going to do to him. I had to be there to right. see it, right? So I referred to that like I remember that vividly when I was growing up. So I can't see where it would change today. Well, let's talk a little bit, um, and, and I know for the fans who would be watching this segment. They'd be interested in knowing from your perspective, like who were the very best? Let's say the top three all time that were great at cutting the wrestling promo. Well, actually, my brother come to mind, uh, the Beast. Oh, one of the best. And, and uh, Archie Goldie, the Stomper. Okay. Uh, Dr. D. Schultz. Okay. Well, there were so many to go, but those would be three. Well, okay, so let's let's start with your brother, the Beast. Now, Ivan uh, Cormier, the Beast. Mm -hmm. um, what was it about his promos? Because he he used to talk about those chain matches and going touching all four corners. But what did you admire about the way he cut a promo? Well, most importantly, he spoke from the heart. So he lived, and he was just telling his experience, mm -hmm. and that's interesting if you're a wrestling fan, right? Right. So. And he was no pushover, as I don't have to tell you that. <laughs> and before we get carried away, like you were saying earlier, that Ken Reed. Yes, he, he from has, Sportsnet. Well, if you're seeing this, Ken Reed, I want to say hello. And I watch you a lot, especially on Sid and... Oh, Tim and Sid. That's yeah, 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 yeah. Well, in fact, I, I would dare say that it's Ken Reed that makes the Tim and Sid show. That, that whenever Ken Reed appears on the Tim and Sid show, whatever those That's guys an are, it, 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 there's a bump in the ratings. And I think Leo and I know a little bit about what it takes to make a bump in the ratings. Now, you, you mentioned the Stomper. Uh -huh. And here we are in Calgary. Stomp, this is the Stomper's territory, right? And, and, and so go back to the promo. When you think about Archie Goldie, the Stomper, what was it about Archie and, and his message that seemed to get through? God, it's hard to say. Like, uh, if I was a kid, I'd be scared. Uh, again, he didn't. He didn't leave any stone unturned. He was, and the looks that he had, 
So, oh, just the face, just the facial expression. Exactly, that helped a lot, of course. Yeah. But no, I thought uh, he didn't waste any time talking about the weather. He went right to the point, right? <laughs> so yeah. You, you talk about Dr. D. David Schultz. Do you remember the time he got into trouble with ABC News when he when he decked? The guy who yes. was trying to do the expose in, on pro wrestling. Right, I remember that. What what kind of effect did that cause in the in the in the dressing rooms around the world? Oh, they had a good laugh over it, and they were clapping. They were on on Dr. D's uh, side, of course. Of course. Let's start with you, Bulldog Bob Brown. There's been some talk that you and Rick Valentine reluctant to put the belts on the line. Well, there's no question, you know, that the rock and roll is on the move. They're on the move for one purpose: to get their belts back and have a lot of faith with the wrestling fans and the Maritans. You know, they talk about the big exciting match that took care on, on AT television. Hey, we got the belts. We didn't go out and beat them. We went out and demolished them like we said we we're going to do. Now we've got matches coming up with them. And sure, last week, me and Ron Starr, we suffered a humiliation defeat at the hands of the Rock and Roll. But I'll guarantee you one thing, they're coming up against a dynamite team, the champions, and when the time is right, gentlemen, they'll go down to defeat again. Last week it was Ron Starr and Bulldog Bob Brown, but now you're back with your familiar tag team partner, That's Rick Valentine. That's for sure. We're a well-oiled team. Now, you don't split up a good, well-oiled team and put somebody else in and expect to do as good as me and Bob Brown did. Now, there's a lot of teams out there that are starting to be put together. The Cuban assassin's back. Now, he just came over on a banana boat, and he's talking with Leo Burke and Stephen Pettipa. Well, gentlemen, just wait in line, because there are people ahead of you, and I want to thank everybody for the cards and letters, because we are the people's champion. We did this for you in the Maritimes. And the rock and I, rollers, you'll find out. I can't believe that for a moment. Don't believe it, but... Uh... Yeah, but I'm a more old-fashioned. I, I like the uh, Lutz has, Pat O'Connor, Dory Funk too. So you Those go, you go way back, even way, way back, way back, <laughs> even before the days of Hulk Hogan. And I know, I understand we got to wrap this up, but I understand you're great friends with Brett the Hitman Hart, and you guys uh, hang out every once in a while here. Yes, Brett Hart's a dear friend of mine. Uh, I've helped him a lot through his career. In fact, when I was training guys for WF and World Championship Wrestling. I did it out of Brett's Hart house. He had his own gym. Mm -hmm. That's where I trained the guys. And every now and then, if he was not too busy, he'd give me a helping hand. So that was always uh, a treat. Brett Hart, of course, the sharpshooter, uh, you know, practitioner, and he was what, the, the best there was, uh, the, no, sorry, he was the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. But certainly, and then I came along. Then, <laughs> <laughs> but then, certainly, the legendary Leo Burke, heartthrob of the Maritimes, the guy who, uh, you know, went pillar to post with the likes of the Cuban Assassin, Bulldog Bob Brown, Killer Carl Krupp. Hey, he, speaking of promos, Krupp could cut a pretty good promo. Yes, sir. Too bad he passed on, but uh, yeah, he was one of them for sure. I forgot to mention that, but. He was definitely maybe the number one guy. <laughs> so a late addition to the list, Killer Carl Krupp, for Ken Reed and all of the people around the world who tune in on this particular station, Leo Burke, Gare Maxwell, saying thank you so much for joining us. Special hello to Ken Reed. I'm here. You're a Mertimer. So you got to be something good about you. <laughs> yep. The very best. Leo Burke, I promise you. There. Let's start with uh, the Cuban assassin. I'm going to ask uh, the obvious question, uh, what's in the bag? <laughs> we have something to laugh. Leo yeah. Berg and the Beast, they're going to be in the World Guinness Book record. You know why? It's the why? only tag team that holds the tag team champion belt for only less than one day, maybe 24 hours. <laughs> you know, they, the referee make a quick count. With the help of Dynamite Kid, the British Bulldog. Do you know why we caught him here? What are you carrying? What's in the bag? Over here is the Asian Tag Team Champion. Who are there? The Cuban Commando. The European Tag Team Champion. Who? The Cuban Commando. The North American Tag Team Champion. Who? The Cuban Commando. And the North American Tag Team Champion. You know, we got it all. This is too heavy for any big farmer or fisherman in the maritime to carry. Let's get a word now from international champion Rotten Ron Starr, scheduled to defend his belt against Steve Casey. 
That's right, you know, Casey's been running around shooting his mouth off about wanting a shot at my title. When Miss Peaches told me, says, Ronnie, it's time to put it on the line. Shut all these Maritimers up once and for all. Now that's not bad enough. They got the dynamite kid running around. Say, Ron, sorry, I'm going to get a shot at you too. Well, that's fine. Stephen Petapal, send Carl Molden's nose back. <laughs>